Hi everyone, I'm being completely spontaneous and makeup free. So I've been painting this portrait for the past um, three or four days and it's definitely at a stage where you can see the development. So I'm being brave and I'm gonna do this video to show the painting process of an encaustic wax portrait. So I'm going to turn around now and talk about what I'm doing. Um, so this is actually a commission for Vanderbilt University's Women's Center. So Sally McFaig is, um, she, I believe she passed away in 2019. And so they are honoring um, Sally and other uh, women who had leadership roles in Vanderbilt University. And so I have two portraits to accomplish um, for Vanderbilt. I'm very honored to do this. And Sally in particular is amazing. She's a feminist theologian and just has a wonderful spirit about her. So I'm super excited and I hope to capture her energy and her spirit with the colors in this portrait. So let's, I'm gonna talk about the paints, the palette, um, painting quickly with encaustic wax and the fusing process. So I use a combination of my own paints as well as purchased paints. So um, Encausticos is one of the, Encausticos and r &F are two of the paint companies that I purchase paints from. I love the Encausticos portrait colors and these are actually the Laura Murphy portrait set. Highly, highly recommend the portrait set and I studied with Laura and I adore her. So um, I learned so much from her. And these are, um, these little chunks are um, paints that I've blended myself. In fact, you can see a little bit of, I mean, obviously with purple, it's blue and red, so you can still see a little bit of the red here. Um, the way that I do this is I take my encaustic medium, um, put it in one of these little cupcake uh, plastic tins. These are the silicone or whatever it is that doesn't, um, that doesn't, is heat resistant. Um, and I use powdered pigments. You have to be very careful with powdered pigments. Some artists prefer using oil paint, but I like powdered pigments because they dissipate immediately and you don't have to keep um, um, stirring. Um, the oil paint oftentimes kind of um, sits down in the bottom of the tin um, with uh, encaustic wax. So encaustic wax is beeswax and Damar resin. So over here, this is my painting palette, um, which is simply a pancake griddle. And you can see it a little bit on the edge of it. Um, I keep, I blend my colors directly on the pancake griddle right here. So I think you can see that. And over here, I keep a couple of tins of my mixing colors. So this is a white, and then I have a clear, and over here on the right, you can't see my other uh, palette, but I have um, a big tin of, of clear as well as black, because obviously I'm working with a, a very, very black background here. So, and back here, this is my um, vent system. This is called Ventifume. Um, I purchased this and it's excellent. I don't have it turned on now because it does make a little bit of a noise. Um, the other thing that people love to see is the blowtorch. So with encaustic wax, you need to um, fuse each layer of wax paint onto the one underneath. And so that makes it um, archival and it creates adherence. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that. So I'm very comfortable with a blowtorch. Um, you don't have to use a blowtorch, you can use a um, a heat gun, but with a heat gun you've got air coming out and it creates some movement. I don't want movement with portraiture. So um, I'm going to turn up the flame a little bit just so you can see it. And this is an example of how you might fuse. Now if I'm going to fuse this I'm going to actually take it down. I'm going to fuse the entire painting at once and I'm gonna keep it flat um, because it will drip. Um, sometimes I may fuse a little bit, but you can see that beautiful shine that you can get, particularly with this gorgeous black. Oh my gosh. I got this black pigment from um, a company, a French company in Canada. Uh, the name is escaping me right now. I will post it somewhere. Um, I think I have posted it actually. 
All right, so that is fusing um, my portrait. And then I'm going to come in now. These are my uh, brushes. These look like, um, they actually look like regular long-handled oil painting brushes. And unfortunately, my palette has gotten pretty muddy. Um, the colors have mixed a little bit too much. So the way that I clean my brushes is simply with um, a paper towel and you just wipe them off. And then I'm going to clean up my palette and get rid of that muddiness and put down some new color. So I'm gonna use a little bit of flesh tone here. I'm gonna melt that down on my palette. Since I am at the top layer, um, one of my little tricks that I've learned as I've been painting for a while is um, the closer that I get to being finished, the more I kind of paint with glazes. So I just add more encaustic medium to my paint to make it more transparent and create that blending. I want to mention here that if you put the paint on your brush and stand here and think for too long, you will lose it. And um, for instance, right now, this is dry. Oh, there's still a little bit left on there. But for the most part, um, and that's probably because it's hot outside and I've got the doors open, but if you stand here for more than five seconds, um, your paint on your brush will be dry. So. Um, Encaustic wax works great for me because I am a fast painter. I love to paint quickly and spontaneously. Um, I will put down some brush strokes and then I will stand back and take a look at it. Um, I think that actually her neck probably needs a little bit of work. Um, and I'm going to come in here. I feel like um, this needs to be lifted a little bit. The, um, her crow's feet in her eyes and needs to get a little more shadow. Um, I'm going to do the detail on the eyes and her mouth. Yes, they do look rough, um, but I'll do this at the very end after I have finished doing all of my fun um, fusing work and ironing and blending these colors and blending the hair into the uh, background and doing all that fun stuff that you can do with encaustic wax. So if you have any questions, um, just please um, um, hop on to DM, instant message, wherever you're watching this, let me know. And um, if you are local, um, I'd be happy to have you over to my studio and do, a, um, do some um, small group instruction. And when I say small group, I mean two or less, <laughs> one or two people at a time. Um, let me know if you're interested and I will, um, send you my rates. Thanks so much.